uh, let me get organized over here. Okay. I'm still working on that. <laughs> working I'm gonna on that go ahead and start life. the recording, but take Perfect. your time. Okay. This is a different experience using a different screen reader. So, all right. Welcome everybody to today's session of the Accessible PDF Forms training. Uh, today we are focusing on how to actually put the form fields on your, your document. So Carolyn, you wanna advance to that next slide? Okay. Um, but just, just remember that uh, we do encourage participation. So you are welcome to use the Q&A to ask presenter questions. Just note that we might hold some of those till the end. So we make sure Carolyn can get through all of the important information. Um, all of the microphones should be currently muted other than our, our presenters. Um, but if you do need to, to speak, feel free to raise your hand and one of us will be able to acknowledge you and um, unmute your, your microphone. And huge thank you to Anissa today, our captioner. You do have closed captioning or as Zoom tries to call it now, live transcripts available. So if you need that added text representation of what we are saying, you can grab onto that. Anissa is fantastic. So again, I wanna welcome everybody. I'm just gonna turn it straight over to Carolyn and we'll jump right in today because the, again, we are cramming what seems like not a lot into a very short period of time. And it really is, it's, it really is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot more than it seems, so. Yeah, well, thank you, Lane. Um, let me get over here. So just to give you an agenda for today, we're gonna do a quick recap of what we learned the last time and then talk about what our goals are for today's hour. And then we'll talk about how you navigate Adobe. So if you've never been an Adobe Acrobat, I'll give you some tips on kind of how to get started and maybe where to find some things that you might not know where to find. Um, that was really helpful for me when I was first starting and I just kind of clicked and figured it out. And hopefully this will be a little more helpful for you guys. Oh, just a second, my little guy just woke up. Just one minute. Okay, there you go. Here you go. We will go in a minute. Sorry, we had a late night and he's not quite napping. Um, then we'll go over how to actually use the Adobe Prepare Form tools, which ones you wanna use and which ones you wanna avoid. And then the different types of form fields that you wanna use. Um, some are more accessible, some are less, some are not accessible at all. And then we'll have time at the end to try it all out. All right, so as a quick review for this series, we are going with this scenario. We need to create a training needs survey for state employees. Our desired outcome is threefold. It is a form that can be printed and com be completed by someone using pen and paper. We need to have a form that can be obtained in an electronic format and completed using a computer or mobile device. And it also needs to have a form that has that necessary electronic structure to allow assistive technology users to compete complete the form on a computer with the assistive technology of their choosing. So that's kind of our scenario that we're going with and, and building throughout the form field or building throughout the form series. What we learned last time was how to actually create that accessible source document with Microsoft Word. So we use text and paragraph formatting and styles within Microsoft Word to add spacing to where fields will eventually go. So that original source document isn't gonna look like a form, but it's gonna create that structure that we can add those form fields in with Adobe Acrobat. We also organize our content using styles and that adds the context necessary for software like assistive technologies need to navigate those documents. And then we saved it as a PDF. Remember we didn't print as PDF, we saved as PDF. That's the correct way to save all that work we've done. And if you guys have any questions about that, we do have all of our recordings from last time available on the IDAC Canvas training site. And we'll uh, share a link for that if you guys haven't accessed that. So today's outcomes really is the first time we're going to be working with the PDF document. So we're going to utilize those prepare form tools in Adobe Acrobat. We're going to identify accessible form fields within Adobe Acrobat. Uh, so what we can use and what we can't. We're going to create accessible form fields using those tools. And then we're going to create a draft PDF that will have those fillable form fields. And that's what we'll start with for our next session when we start talking about the next step in the process. 
So when it comes to Adobe, um, it works a little bit different than other document creating tools like Microsoft Word, Google Docs. It where some of those other ones, all the tools are really easy to find and available for you to access anytime. You kind of have to set this up with Adobe. So on the left side of your screen, I have a screenshot here of what my Adobe Acrobat Pro um, interface looks like. On the right side of your screen, you're going to have a navigation pane. And that is where you can access all those different navigation views that you need to identify what's what in your document. The ones that are super helpful for accessibility are the content, the order, and the tags navigation view. If you don't have those three options available, if you go to view, this view menu item is going to be super helpful to you. So if you can't find anything, look under view. But view, show, hide, navigation panes, you can toggle on and off all these different navigation panes. And once you add it, it's there. So it doesn't reset every single time you close your, your, um, your program. On the right side of the screen is this kind of task tools pane. So that's where you have all the different icons available for the different tools available. So these are the things that are actually going to do something to your PDF. So it's going to edit it. It's going to add form fields. It's going to do an accessibility check where the navigation panes are just showing you different kind of layers within your document. The tools pane is actually going to let you do things with your document. And like I said, this view menu is going to be your best friend because there's all kinds of different options available here. You can change the way you're navigating the page. You can change the way the page is displayed. So you can make it fit the full screen. You can have side by side views, all those different things. The zoom tool will let you uh, view your document in different types of zoom. So you can turn on reflow in this. You can do all kinds of different things with that. Um, you can add tools from this. You can also change your display theme. Mine has kind of this dark background because that's easier for me to work in. So you can actually make the tool more accessible for you to use as you're working in it for yourself. There's also reading mode, full screen, um, and then under show hide, these rulers and grids, we're gonna demonstrate how this can be really helpful for you today. So that's a quick overview of uh, kind of getting nav uh, Adobe set up, and we'll show how this all works when we do the demonstration. So when we Carolyn, talk about, yes. Sorry, real quick, we just have a quick uh, question from Kristen. Um, yes. she, can you call? Can you clarify what were the three things you said were the most important? Content. It's this little uh, document icon, and then you also want order. It's the one that has four squares and a little Z. That's the page content order. And then tags, that looks like a little gift tag icon. So content, order, and tags. Those are gonna be your three friends. Are we good? I think so, thank you. Awesome, yes, great question. And I'll reemphasize that when we get into the document as well. When we talk about the prepare form tools, so from our tools menu or tools pane, we're gonna select prepare form. Kind of wanted to give you a quick overview of how this is set up. On the right side, all the tools that are available for our prepare form tool will be there. And then along the top are all of our different types of form fields. So we'll turn those on and off as we're adding fields. And then we have some different property settings and alignment settings available in the tool pane as well. So our form fields are along the top. Align, center, match size, distribute, all of those things are available in this tools pane. And then we also have more options. I don't use those a ton, um, but that's an, an option as well here. And then all those field properties. So I'll demonstrate how you can use these different tools as we get going. Any questions about that before we go on? I think this will all start to make more sense as we see it in action. So when we talk about the types of form fields available, there are several options available. So along that uh, strip of across the top of the document, you have options to select fields, this little cursor icon. Then you have the option to edit text and images, and it looks like a little document with a pencil. You can also add text to your document. I don't recommend using this a ton because we wanna add that text in Microsoft Word in our original source document. 
Then we get into the actual text fields that we're going to use. This icon that looks like a T with the cursor next to it, that's where you're going to be those short and long text fields. So that's one that you're going to use quite a bit because it's pretty accessible um, when you're setting it up for an electronic document or for a print document. The other thing when you're going to use quite a bit is this checkbox. Um, so it's a checkbox in a square or a check mark in a square. That one is also going to be really accessible no matter what type of format your document is in. Some of the other ones that are available are radio button, um, add a list of choices, add a drop down list. You can add a print or clear button, this little OK button icon here. You can add image files. I believe this is like an upload image option. Then you have a date field, a signature field, and you can add a barcode field. And then there's also these two fields on the side here, keep tool on off. I'll demonstrate how to use that because I just learned how to use it and it's really helpful. And then those help icons. So if you need to look up information in Adobe uh, documentation, that help icon is really helpful. And the last thing I wanted to say, I've mentioned this a little bit, but there's a ton of options available in Adobe for form fields. But really, there are three that you're going to use. This add text field, add checkboxes, add signature field, and then you're going to use uh, potentially this keep tool on, off, and help. And the reason for that is because these are really the only fields that work for both an electronic document and for a print document. If you think about a radio button, the value of a radio button is you're only selecting one option. So that requires a little bit more setup for the electronic version, but when you print it, you can't make your user just choose one option. They could select multiple ones, whether it's a radio button or a checkbox. So that doesn't really work well for print. When you talk about um, drop down lists or adding choices, again, you may have more choices in that list than can work in a print document. So they can work and be accessible for electronic, you have just lost your print user because maybe there's 10 choices and only three are displaying in the print view. Now they don't have a way to select those. Same with this print clear button. Um, it's not really going to add any value to the content because people can select fields, they can delete them. Um, if they're printing it, they can't use this clear button and it requires a lot more coding um, behind the scenes to make it function. And when I've encountered that on documents, I get a lot of accessibility issues. So it really uh, should be used sparingly, if not at all. Uploading images. Again, if you're printing a document, you can't upload an image file to this. So not having that as an option um, makes your document a lot more flexible for printing and for electronic and assistive technology. And then this calendar date, uh, add a calendar date um, or add a date option gives the users an option to toggle on a calendar, which again can create some accessibility issues that just typing a date in the date field doesn't. And then the barcode option, I haven't done a ton with, but again, it makes it a little difficult when you're talking about a print version versus electronic. And then again, making sure that it works for all the different type of assistive technology. So text fields, check boxes, and signature fields, those are going to be the ones that we're going to use the most um, across most of our forms. So does anyone have questions about that before we jump into our document? not seeing anything all right well let's hop into all right so we've got adobe acrobat pulled up on the screen we do perfect all right so last time we saved our pdf this is what it looks like in a P in the adobe pdf we've got all of our spacing yeah just a second sweetie we will go to grammys as soon as we wake up <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this is what our document looks like in Adobe Acrobat. So here's here, Theo. Go sit down. Um, sorry about that. We have all of our spacing available for our fields. We know what needs to have a short text field. We know what needs to have a checkbox. We know what needs to have long text box fields. So let me move my my videos here so I can access my tools. So in the tools pane, 
if you don't have a tool available, there are a couple different ways to look for it. Here you go, Theo. There you go, baby. So there are a couple different ways to look for tools. You can use the search tools icon and you can search for, if you don't know what the tool is called, you can just start typing and it'll pull up a list of ones that uh, fit that tool. So if you don't know what the form tool, the prepare form tool is called, you can just start typing form and it will come up with all sorts of different options available for you. You can also select more tools and then look through the list of options available here. So that's one way to find it. Or you can use this view, show, hide, tools option to find some of the different tools. But the tool we're looking for is prepare form. Couple things that are super helpful when you select prepare form. By default, you're going to have this document requires signatures checked. We don't want that checked because anytime you're um, using kind of the automated tools in Adobe, it can create more work. So I like to turn that one off. And then form field auto detection is off, but by default it's on. So what we want to do is change this to automatically detect form fields. Make sure this button is unchecked because what that will do, um, if you have anything on your document that looks like a form field, if you have this checked, Adobe is going to try to insert form fields and that can just get really messy. So make sure that's unchecked. So this document requires signatures. Even if it does, I suggest unchecking this and form field auto detection, make sure that is off. And then it will have you make sure that you have the file that you need to turn into a form and you can press start. Now, all of these form tools are available for us. So our add form fields options are available at the top um, above our document. And then we have all of the form tools here. Under fields, you'll have, if you have more than one page, it just lists the page, but there's no form fields yet, so there's not anything here. So what we do is identify where we need to add our form fields, and we basically just start drawing them on. And this is where you really do need to have a mouse to draw those different form fields on. But one of the tools I mentioned that would be very helpful is the rulers and guides, because unlike Microsoft Word, Adobe, is, you can just put content anywhere. There's really no way to kind of keep things within a margin or to align things very nicely. So if we go to view, show hide, rulers and grids, we can turn on a grid. We can also turn on a ruler if that's helpful. So that way, if we need to know like where things are uh, placed on the page. Now we can use these rulers and grids to help us draw these tools on. So date, name, what organization are you affiliated with and what is your job title? Those we identified as our short text fields. So we are going to grab the add a text field and this keep tool selected off on option is going to be really handy if you have multiple fields that are the same. So I'm going to click this because I have four short text fields in a row. So I'm going to just draw this text field on and use those grid lines to help me and notice the text field, the next text field automatically popped up. If I have this little button turned off, I have to go back up and reselect my text field every time. So if you're going to be adding multiple fields, use that on off option. It's really helpful. <laughs> Oh, my little guy is usually napping by this time. So then we can align those up and then just kind of use the same spot on the field. So here our ruler is showing eight inches. So that's a good space to kind of have our more our uh, kind of the boundary of our text on that side. Now we're just going to keep adding our short text fields and use those grids to really help you. Carolyn. Yes. We have a question. Can you please explain again why it is important to have the automatically detected form fields unchecked? So one thing that happens if you have anything on your document that looks like a form field, 
example, a table that maybe you don't want to have form field information in, Adobe will automatically say, this is a form field and shove information in there. So if you don't want it to be a form field, you have to then delete it and do a lot of cleanup work. Where when you start with just a plain document and you don't have those form fields auto detected, it just gives you a lot more control and you end up saving time because you're not having to go in and redo anything Adobe did. The other thing is when it auto detects those form fields, it tries to identify what the name of that field is and what the tooltip for that field is. And that can be really messy, especially if it doesn't know exactly what that content is. So you again, it just requires a lot more cleanup work than if you're starting with just a nice clean document that you can control where the form fields are. And if you want to play around with that auto detection on off, definitely give it a try. Um, sometimes it won't put anything on the page. Other times it will try to fill out everything. So it really just depends on your document um, and kind of how much cleanup work you might want to do with that. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. Awesome. I've I've tried it every way. And the more you can not auto anything in Adobe, the better it is, because you usually have to do a ton more cleanup because it's it it tries its best, but it's a computer and doesn't always know everything. So um, I just find more success having it turned off. So we've got our short text fields in here. And one thing you can do um, is you can go through and add all your short text fields to your document, then go and do all your text boxes or your check boxes. I like to go in order because as we, just a second, sweetie, as you add those text fields, notice under our page, our text boxes are starting to fill in. If I were to go and add my next short fields, uh, short text fields down um, in four questions down, it's still going to be added to the page in this order. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more organizing to drag and drop and change the tab order here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say I add in my text boxes down here for these questions, and then I go and add my check boxes. Well, now my checkbox is at the bottom of the order, but when I'm tabbing through and reading my questions, I need to have this checkbox next. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more cleanup to make sure that checkbox ends up where I am, where I need it to be. So I recommend going in order, even if it means um, toggling between form types um, a little bit more often. It's going to save you less time rearranging the fields. Um, and so it's just going to uh, save you time again in the long run. So now we're going to add our checkboxes to our tools question. So Carolyn, real yeah. quick, going back a little bit here. Um, if you have the pin turned on and resize a text box, will it keep the shape for the next box? So I don't think it will keep, it'll keep the default shape. I don't know if it will keep all of the same properties. But the nice thing is, and again, I just discovered these tools. I don't know why it took me so long to learn them. But Adobe has these align, center, match size, and distribute tools. So let's say I don't have them all the same size. I can hold down my control key and click these different options and then say match size and shape. So that if I have to change them all, um, I can match it to, to so that they all work. So that's a really quick, uh, quick match width and height if you have them separate. I don't know if I make changes to my size, if it will keep it because uh, again, I, I haven't played around with that that much. Um, but the other thing that's really nice with these alignment tools is this distribute option. So I can select all of my checkboxes and I can distribute them vertically. And so it just cleans up the alignment just really nicely. Before I used to go into the properties and do everything manually. And then I looked over it, I'm like, oh, I wonder what this button does. And it just aligns it really nice. Um, 
So there's our check boxes. Are there any questions about that? We do. Um, I yes. might be getting a little bit ahead, but uh, Diane yes. is curious, do you name your fields? We will get to that. So I'm kind of showing uh, it in this process, but once you learn the process, you can do, you can interchange the steps. This is a part where you can put on all your form fields and then you could name them all. You can change all your settings. Um, or you can do everything one field at a time. I'm kind of using this process just for the demonstration today. But once we get through all the different things you need to have per form field, you can definitely do it all with each individual form field as you add it to the page. Does that help? I'm not seeing any responses to okay. that, but we do have we a question. Have question. Yep. My Adobe Pro does not look like the presenters and what version is she using? I am using Acrobat Pro DC. So that should be the newest. newest yeah. Version. And you're sure you're in Adobe Pro, not Adobe Reader? And you have okay. a second to respond here. Yes, she's she's in 10 or X. So each of the versions look slightly different. Um, WebAIM has a fantastic, no, 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 it's not WebAIM. I'm drawing a blank on their name, but there is a, a resource that's uh, from a federal grant that has tons of re different resources available for um, Adobe, Microsoft, and the nice thing is they have uh, different versions of Adobe. I can find that link and share it um, in the uh, Canvas site because it explains um, what some of the different interfaces look like. Um, a lot of the tools are the same, but they might be located in a little bit different places. So I will find those help sheets. Wonderful, thank you. And we have another yeah. one. Um, this is regarding Okay, this is the text box. I think I see what she's asking. Uh, can you have more than one line within a text box? Will yes. the will the text auto wrap when you are entering information or does the text size down to fit the box? Awesome question. And let me get these form fields drawn on really quick and then we will start talking about all that fun stuff. So I will just fast forward really quick here. I am going to add the check boxes to our skills question. So I'm gonna go ahead and while you're doing that, um, Kristen mm -hmm. has a wonderful uh, comment here for all of the state employees. Please check with your IT leadership. You should have an enterprise contract that employees can upgrade to, to get their version to Pro DC. So the, the latest Perfect. one. We'll just distribute those. Yeah, just a second. We'll go to Grammys as soon as I'm done, honey. And then for our longer text boxes, we're gonna draw in and take up additional space but we're going to still go over to this kind of eight inch mark and then this is one that will have multiple lines and then we can draw in that for our last three questions draw in our form field and then we'll get our second one and then our last one doing a presentation with a two-year-old awake and happy is fun <laughs> We're inclusive so, around you. Very inclusive. So Danielle, well, um, I'm not sure. I do know, um, Carolyn, I'm wondering, Danielle, it's not just maybe the color, because I know Carolyn uses the darker color on Adobe. Um, I don't know if that's just it or if it's the whole layout that you're having trouble with. But definitely what? check with your IT. Um, she, Danielle said uh, we were just updated at the first of the year and that that's what they gave her was, was X, so. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, it is a whole different layout. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And the other thing you can do next week for our drop in session, if you want to show up to that, we can take a look at yours individually. Because um, I know I've used a few different versions of it. So I may be able to help with that. Um, just not at this session today. So does, does that help? She said, yes, no worries. I think Perfect. that'll work. Okay. We'll, we'll be sure to include a link to the live session. Perfect. Um, so in this uh, 
we've added all of our form fields, but this does not make it accessible at this point because we don't have titles or names on our form fields. We also, if you look at print preview, so we have some shading on these by default. Um, it's kind of this darkish purpley blue type of color. But if we look at a print preview and let me know if this shows up on the share screen. Does that uh, my print uh, window there? It does, yep. Okay, and it's pretty small, but if you notice, there's no lines or shading or anything on this view. So that's not super helpful if you're going to be printing the document. You kind of want those guides, those underlines, um, or anything like that, so you know where to put your answer. So instead of like when we were in Microsoft Word, instead of like using tables or drawing lines there, we're going to use the form field properties in Adobe. So there's different ways to open these form field properties. You can double click with your mouse on one of the form fields. You can right click from your fields menu and select properties. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the appearance of these. So under the appearance menu on the text field properties, we can add a border color. And I tend to go with black because it prints really well and it has good contrast. And then you can change the thickness of the line. I tend to go with thin because it usually works pretty well. And then it's not using a ton of extra ink if someone's printing. But for line style, I use underlined when I'm doing short text fields, because if we use a box all the way around it, it might be less comfortable for someone to write in. But an underline gives people enough space if they write large, if they have tall letters, or if they write small, they don't feel like they have to cram it all into this tiny box. So underline is a great way to add. And if we do a print preview, we can see that line is showing up on our form. And so any of our short text boxes, I really like using that underline option. And we can click through once the properties are open, you can click through your fields and add those. So that's how we can make those short text box fields a little more accessible for people when they're printing and working on it, um, working on with pen and paper or pencil and paper. So that gives them the guides that they need for, oh, I didn't draw in our large text box here for our other. Let me do that really quick, line it up. Those grids are super helpful. I just barely learned about them and I don't know how I've gone so far without them. So here okay, we've we got- have a quick yes. one, Carolyn. Is there a way to set the text fields to that as default? There might be. I haven't found it yet. Um, so, but again, if you're using large text boxes, if I put an underline under my large text box, that doesn't make as much sense because when I look at the print preview, now I've got a line down at the very bottom. So you may not want to set it as a default for all of your text box fields because you may not want to use it for all of your text box fields. When you have these larger text box fields, um, Usually having enough space under your field is good enough for people to know to write in that space. You can also add a solid line around it. But again, I, I like to leave it fairly open if it's a large text space, because I tend to know to write underneath that if I'm printing on a document. And it's also less ink that's taken up when you're printed document. So when you're talking about large text fields, you might not want to put any kind of border around them. And then we've got these large text fields here, but the question came up about word wrapping. So if I preview my form and I'm in my large text box, I'm going to hold down my A key and see what happens. It's just going off the page. It's not wrapping at all. There is a form field property that I can turn on for these large text fields to make them more uh, accessible for our uh, electronic users because this is going to take more time for me to delete and see everything that I wrote where if it's wrapping the text, then it works. Um, it just works. So I'm going to turn my prepare form tools back on open my properties for my large text fields and under options. This is where you're going to change your options for your large text fields. So I'm going to turn on this multi-line option. And now my word, um, my text wraps. 
But the other option, scroll long text. So if I go back into my preview mode, mode and I'm just going to hold my key down, now it is scrolling my text. So this is something we probably don't want for our document as well, because again, our goal is to have something that works for print, for electronic, and for assistive technology users. And this scroll bar just adds another element that, let's say I'm filling out this form electronically, but I need to print it so I can send it into wherever I'm going. If my content is scrolling, when I print, it's going to be cut off. So when I go back into my form field properties, I'm going to turn off the scroll long text. So now when I'm back in preview and I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I've got my A key down, at some point it's just going to stop. So it kind of adds a character limit um, to those. And if you have really strict character limits, um, you may need to include that in on the page as a direction. Um, but if you don't think people are going to need a ton of space, turning off that scroll on text and turning on multi line is going to be a really good way to, to take care of things. So then I can go to my other Oh, I got to turn my prepare form tools back on. That is one thing. If you preview and close the preview, if you need to make changes, you do have to open the prepare form tool. So I can go in, turn on multi line, turn off scroll long text for any of my large text fields. Multi line. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Scroll long. I don't know why it's jumping all over the place on me. So there we go. Turn on multi line, turn off scroll long text. So those are some of the different properties that are, that are available for your text. Um, if you have a short text field, you also can turn off the scroll long text. Um, and that just makes it so that the text doesn't uh, go off the screen at all. I don't think it's as big of an issue with the short text fields because by default, people are tending to put shorter answers in those, but it could be. So it's an option you can turn off. So when it comes to the field properties, after you've added them all to the form field, um, typically an underlined border for those short text fields, um, checking with the multi-line and the scrolling text for large text fields, and then by default, your um, checkboxes already have a border color of uh, black and solid. So if you need to change these up at all, you can as well. So there's different options, dashed, beveled, inset, underlined. Um, I tend to just go with solid for check boxes. Um, let's see. I think that was it for the field properties. Did you guys have any questions about that before we go on to titles? I'm not seeing anything. All right. So like I said, the properties and the appearance, you can do all of that as you're adding individual form fields. I'm just trying to kind of do it in stages here. So in the future, when you add a short text field, you can pull up the properties and name it, change the appearance, do all those settings as you go, or you can do it in kind of this phased approach where I'm going to add all my fields, and then I'm going to draw all my borders and change all my settings. And then we're at this step where we need to talk about naming our form field. So by default, um, Adobe just gives it a generic name. So the type of form field, text box, checkbox, and then the number that it is in the in the tab order. So the order that it appears as you kind of tab through the content with your keyboard. Um, this isn't super helpful. We want to give this some sort of name. And the name is really helpful um, just for kind of scanning your content and making sure that all of your questions are there. Um, and I think it also comes into play if you're collecting content with your PDF document as well. I don't have as much experience about that, um, but naming your fields, you want to give them unique names. And the way you do that is again on the property menu. Um, and you can do uh, access the property menus by double clicking and we're looking under name under the general tab. You can also right click properties here and it will pull up the general name or you can right click from the fields list and select rename. So that will let you rename it directly on this form field. That's helpful if you're kind of going through and just renaming the fields. 
But as a preview for part, uh, our next part, when we're looking at the properties, there's name and then there's also tooltip. We're not gonna discuss this today. This is gonna be next time, but this tooltip is incredibly important. Um, so we need to have a name for it and then we need to have a tooltip. So just keep this in the back of your mind that this is something you need to add as well. And it's something I usually add as I'm naming my form field. So we're just gonna save this for next time. But when we're talking about naming form fields, you don't need to have um, a really elaborate name. And this is another thing that happens when that auto form field detection is off. Adobe really puts in really lengthy, um, not really easy to read from a human perspective, names and tool tips in here. So leaving that auto detection form off just makes this so much cleaner. There's less you have to delete, select, change, all of that. So when you're thinking about the names for your form fields, I go next to the question. So this, the question is date. So date is a pretty easy name for this field. And then we have name. So I'm gonna type name. Um, this next question is what organization are you affiliated with? So my name is going to be organization. Hey, Carolyn, yes. I think you you answered this, um, but okay. Lori had a question regarding she's seen a form where the name field shrinks the name if it is long. Um, and she asked asking how is that done and it's probably because it was automatically added probably um, it probably was an automatic ad so I tend to take the question and create a shorthand version for the name so this. Um, the tool tip doesn't truncate. The tooltip can be longer, um, but the name can sometimes get truncated if it's too long. So think of the name. Um, again, this I think this comes into play like if you're collecting data and that name um, is more like the administrative label, I believe, um, as opposed to the label that gets read out for the screen reader user or for the person hovering the mouse over the field. And I don't know if you want to talk about that lane. Um, but I tend to pick a name that's like a short um, version of the question. So what organization are you affiliated with? Organization is descriptive and short. So I know this is the question about organization. When I talk about what is your job title, a name of title tells me what that information is. But when you're talking about form fields that have like multiple choices, um, you need to, you might need to make them a little more descriptive. So for this one, what tools are available at your agency to make accessible documents? So here you can either name them the, um, the multiple choice option, or you can tie it into the question. So what that might look like for these ones is if I'm asking questions about tools, I don't really have these options anywhere else on my form. So I can just name this one Adobe. I can name this one Google. I can name this one Microsoft. Can name prepared templates, templates. And then here's where we might need to adjust this a little bit because we have an other checkbox and we also have an other text box response. So. I'm going to name this one my other check because it is my checkbox version. And I'm going to name my text box other response other text. So that way, each of those form fields, I know what I'm collecting there. And then I've also made them different from each other. Because if you've noticed, um, if you've worked with Adobe Forms before, you might find like, name underscore one, name underscore two. Those Each of those form fields need to have a unique name. So other than just adding a number, um, kind of adding the type of field might be helpful. When you have multiple choice options that might repeat throughout the document. So here we have, do you know what tools you need to create accessible documents or web content? Yes, no, I don't know, or I am unsure. We could potentially have another question on this that follows that exact same setup of new question, yes, no, I'm unsure. New question, yes, no, I'm unsure. What we can do for these options when we're naming them 
is kind of reference the question that's being asked. So this one is talking about tools. So I'm going to call this tools yes, tools no, and tools unsure. So that way, if I had another question about um, maybe, do you know what tools you need to create accessible web content, I could call it um, like tools web yes, tools web no, tools web unsure. Does that make sense? So that way I'm naming each of those form fields something um, unique. It looks like I missed some of my, there we go. Um, Adobe, oh, I've got my two text boxes. I got those out of order here. Let me fix those. There we go. So now our next two questions, estimate what percentage of your job is dedicated to document creation and estimate what percentage of your job is dedicated to web creation. So those are similar questions. So I'm going to call one um, percent doc, like percent document. And then I'm going to call the next one percent web. And now we have another set of checkboxes. So again, I can, if this is the only type of scale question I'm asking in this, then I can just kind of give it the not comfortable, somewhat comfortable, comfortable use. So that way I know what my scale options are. So not comfortable. I don't know if you guys can hear the ABC mouse songs going in the background. <laughs> it's serenading me. Very faint, but it's not bad. It just... Oh, good, because it's a little louder for me. We love those ABC Mouse songs. So comfortable, very comfortable. And extremely comfortable. So then we have our last three questions. So we need to add a title to our long text box question. So what do you feel your current skill level is in creating accessible document or web content? So we can just call this um, like skill level. And if you want a uh, doc web. So again, kind of short handing those questions so that you know um, as you're reviewing them what they're asking for and then biggest challenges related to documents. So this could be called um, doc challenge. And then what document trainings have you attended? So let's say this is doc training. And then what accessibility trainings would you potentially held, uh, would you attend if held at your university or your institution rather, sorry. So this is kind of talking about what would you attend in the future? So I'm just gonna call this future training. So now when I scan, oh, and sometimes it doesn't always save what you put. So um, future training. So then you can kind of scan, um, oh, and it didn't save my date field. So this is really nice when you're trying to proof your content because you can go through and just double check um, prepared templates, make any changes that you need, templates. And this helps you kind of proof the uh, order that your form fields are in. So I know I've got date, name, organization, title. Um, I've got my check boxes here. I've got my, where is my, oh, see, there we go. I got it out of order. My other text box was down at the bottom of my order. So I can drag that and rearrange it to where it needs to be. And this is my other text. So this is a really good way to kind of help proof your tools as you're going through it, proof your form fields rather. So I've got my tool options. I've got my percent questions. I've got my, um, see, there we go. We've got another one out of order. My tools unsure needs to be up with my yes, no, unsure. And then I've got a couple that didn't save very comfortable. And extremely, oh, checkbox 19. 
Carolyn, I did just want to give you a quick note on time. Yes. We have oh, okay. 10 minutes left. Perfect. Well, then it looks like I put in. So this is a good way to kind of help because um, it looks like I had double check boxes in there. We do have another question yes. um, from Alyssa. Is, it, is the process similar to moving them in the reading order? Would I need to do both? Yes. So that save that question for next time, because that is one of the final checks we do before we publish our document. Um, most of the form fields automatically get added to the end of the reading order. So it is one that you will need to change in the reading order of the document. But having them set in this reading order in the fields view will make that process so much easier. Um, so there we go. I've got names for all of my content. And I mentioned that we didn't add tooltips at this point in time. So I'm going to switch this over to Lane and we're going to demonstrate just how important those tooltips are. So Lane, I will turn this over to you. There's still me. There we go. Yeah. I'm doing I'm doing all the things over here, but I had to switch screen readers today, so I am a little discombobulated. Um, so before we, we got started today, Carolyn had gone through and completed all of this and had sent me you know, kind of the version of the document that she just created. So it has the form fields, they have names, but they do not yet have tooltips. Um, and I'm going to show you guys with the screen reader here real quick, um, with any luck, because it's being incredibly difficult over here. All right, that's not the window I want. There we go. And I'm going to share sound. So I want to prepare everyone for the robotic voice you are about to hear. Meeting controls window. You are viewing to guest screen alert. All right. Accessible Adobe Forms. Accessible Adobe Forms trap. Nick or Carolyn, can you guys confirm we have we the- We are the, good to go. Yeah, okay. Right, let me slow my speaking right down. Voice Microsoft David, rate 80, rate 70, rate 70, rate 60, rate 60, rate 55, rate 50. And so I've got- Heading level. Focus at the top of the document here, and I can down arrow and read Please through Please complete here. this IDAC needs survey to help direct future training offerings about accessibility. Dot. Heading level two about you edit. So about you edit. Date name. Date name. So right across that line. What organization are you affiliated with? Question. Okay, so this is how I can read the general information, but if I really wanted to get in there and you know, go into a form field so that Editing I can edit, edit link, I would use the letter E and it said edit link. So just with the name, I don't know what that edit box is associated with. So it just says edit link. So I'm going to tab, I'll go to the next one. Maybe. Document one slash two read only C colon back edit. There's another edit box, but edit what? I still don't know what I'm supposed to put in these edit boxes. Uncheck check box not checked. There's an uncheck check box. Uncheck check box not checked. So the name is one of the first first steps it's great for the creators it's great for anybody who might come along later and edit um it, you can use it in your your fields list to help order things quickly um but that's only one piece of the puzzle the next piece of the puzzle is going to be the tool tips and they this why we have set aside an entire training on tool tips because it's not just about you know, writing down or putting in there what it, what appears to the right of these check boxes, right? Or when we look at name and edit or name and date, sorry, they, they, the text 
visual label appears to the left of where you would type your name or where you would write the date. Um, and sometimes just providing that information in a tooltip can be incredibly important and, and be sufficient to help people complete a form. Other times, especially, and Carolyn touched on this when she got down to the Unchecked. yes, no, unsure question. If we had multiple questions that presented users with yes, no, unsure, yes, no, unsure, they would not understand the relationship between yes, yes, and yes, as it relates to the questions around them. So there is a little bit of an art that goes into writing tooltips. I'm pretty excited to have Sharina One colon dig, dig into that for us next week. I'm going to meeting control pop over meeting. here and stop sharing so you don't have to hear my screen reader anymore. <laughs> I know it's overwhelming. Um, we, we have about five minutes left. And I know I have the time to stick around and, mm -hmm. and answer some questions after, but I, we do have a hard stop for a closed captioner. So um, Carolyn, unless you have any last minute things you, you wanna drop in here, I wanna make sure that we give a few minutes here. Yeah, the only thing I wanted to mention is just like last week, I created videos for you to follow along with that. So we will share that playlist with you. The only one we didn't get to today is the editing a PDF using the edit PDF tool. I do have a video about that, but the main takeaway is really try not to edit your PDF within Adobe unless you absolutely have to. If you have to make like small changes, like a word or two, that might be okay. But if you can, if you have to make spacing changes, any alignment changes, go back to that original source document. That is going to be your best tool. Even if you kind of lose some of the work you've done building those forms, you're going to spend more time fighting with that Adobe PDF tool than um, just making the changes super quick in Microsoft Word and saving it as a new PDF. So there is a video on that as well. And I don't know if you have that playlist link, Nick, that you could put in the chat, but that's all that's all I had for today. And if you guys have any questions or want to see anything or have me look at your version of Adobe next week, join us same time for the drop in session. And Carolyn, did we have a YouTube link directly to the, the series for anybody who is not in Canvas to access those recordings. I believe I do have I'm that. I'm dropping it right yep, now. Perfect. Yep, there it is. Yep. Yep. So that will get you to the playlist uh, for the three videos for this week where we talk about um, adding those form fields to the uh, document and then how you can set those different form properties and then some information on you know when to edit the PDF and when to just say I'm going back to my Word document because it's it's going to give me so many more um, robust tools to make those structural changes and not have to fight with Adobe because it's never fun. <laughs> it's not fun to edit in Adobe. So that's all I have for today. Great. Thank you, Carolyn, so much. And this is one piece of, of the Adobe Forms puzzle that a screen reader user, a, a, you know, primary, primary screen reader user could not do independently. At this time, there, there is no way for someone who cannot use a mouse to move those form controls where they need to be um, uh, spatially. So this is one of those limitations. Okay. Do we have, um, Nick, do, are we going to send out a reminder email for the um, drop-in session next week? We can, or I can okay. drop it here. One of the catches is that it's a Zoom link. So right when you click yeah. on it, it opens up the, the meeting automatically. Um, okay. So maybe we will just put it, I'll add it to the text of the reminder emails. It'll Perfect. Be a week and, and if an you, hour ahead of time. And if you pop into the Canvas site, it's there. Um, and we'll see if we can add it to the reminder email as well. And uh, just a reminder, as you get ready to, to head out, top of the hour, um, make sure that you complete the, uh, the survey from today as well. If you get a chance, I think it's just three or four questions um, that Nick and I need for reporting. So get a chance to do that. That would be fantastic. I made it through with a two-year-old. <laughs> he is great. so cute. <laughs> <laughs>